to. A few weeks before Christmas, David Hurd became the first postman to be murdered in connection with his work in nearly four centuries of the Postal Service. It's difficult to figure why someone would want to steal pre-Christmas letters. It's harder still to imagine why anyone would be prepared to kill for them. David Hurd lived all his life in Sheffield and all his life had gone to see United. He had two great passions, his football and his family. My life now is non-existent. I don't feel as though I've got a life because the love of my life is dead. See ya. David had spent 31 years working for the Royal Mail. David loved his work. He enjoyed the outdoors, driving, and he never ever complained about getting up, going to work early, or coming in late at night. At 5.50 p.m. on Monday the 15th of November, Andrea Bray was in Fraser Crescent, Woodseeds. I suddenly heard some footsteps at the bike and I turned round and saw two lads. I remember the two lads because they came up behind me and startled me. I turned round to look at them and they'd gone down the grass verge. Both the boys were young. Could they have been you? Next day, Tuesday the 16th of November. Hello, love. You all right? David used to ring me up nearly every day to see if I was all right, and he rang at quarter past four, asked if I was all right. Love you too. I'll have your supper ready for you when you get in. Bye, love. And that was the last conversation I had with David. Soon after calling Jean, David set off on his last collection. At 10 to 5, Andrea Bray was once again in Fraser Crescent. I was coming home from work and I got up to the post box at the bottom and the mousy haired boy I'd seen the night before was stood on the corner, just stood there with his hands in his pockets. It sent Todd because he was just loitering around. Moments later, the van was seen travelling at high speed, following a dark cavalier. This is half a mile away from the letterbox. It's Lindburn Road, where, as it happens, a resident was expecting a delivery. Hey, sounds like a van. Go and have a look, then. I knew he weren't a postman. He wasn't wearing a uniform. He wasn't old enough to be a postman. He wasn't old enough to be nothing. Come here. What's the matter? Well, look at him here. What's he doing? He was about five foot six, five foot eight, uh, slim build, very fresh face. He looks as though he'd never had a shave in his life. He was a young lad. He sat in the front of the van and he 
shot round as though somebody shouted him from behind. Where's he going now? He's moved to the back of that. There's another, another lad with him. The second guy, he was like stocky built. He was maybe about five foot eight. His hair was very unkept. He walked across to the car, which was a dark cavalier. He got something out of the car, then moved to the back of the post office van. Can you see what he did? No, I don't know. The movement seemed as though they were moving stuff out the back of the van into the back of the car. Wait, he's coming back. The driver of the van walked back round to the front of the van and then wiped the door handle and walked back. They got into the right on the back seat of the car and they drove off. I'm gonna phone post office. Meanwhile, back in Fraser Crescent, a motorist saw someone lying in the road. David Hurd was still alive, but he had massive injuries to his chest. Although an ambulance arrived in minutes, he died before he got to hospital. I don't know if I'll ever get over it at all. But come time, and with people's help, I hope I do. But I shall never stop loving David. John Booth, David had been hit on the back of the head. He'd, he'd then been run over in his own van. Why? I mean, was there any money on board? No, there was four postal packets removed from the van, but there was no monetary value whatsoever in the van at all. They're quite extraordinary. You've got pretty good descriptions of these two lads, uh, particularly the younger one, whatever he is, 16 years old, something yes, like that. Yes, he's 16, 17 years of age, five foot six tall, slim build, with short, dark hair, which is evenly cut, very clean shaven, doesn't look as though he's shaved, very D clean shaven. Described as sort of baby face, really. That's right. and, and, and the other one, who's a bit, what, two, three years old? Yes, he's like 80 to 20 years of age, five foot eight tall, average build, fair hair, which was very unkempt. Now, the, the, va the vehicle that they were in, it seems, this, this Vauxhall Cavalier, you've got a rather better description than we uh, gave yes, in the reconstruction. That's right. It's a Mark II Cavalier, which, which ranges from X, X to F registrations. It's a five-door hatchback, and it is dark in colour, and that is still to be traced. Now, you've made a lot of inquiries in Sheffield, and now you've actually had a huge response. Everybody's been trying to help on this one. Could this have been organised from outside Sheffield? That's right. We're now in the ninth week of the investigation. There's been a great deal of response from the local people of South Yorkshire. Many inquiries have already been, been undertaken. But we're now looking further afield. Uh, in particular, uh, we've got teams of detectives working in the Manchester area and on offences that have taken place of a similar nature elsewhere in the country. You still need to eliminate those two lads we showed in the reconstruction who were seen there the, the night before. I mean, if, if somebody's heard something on the streets, if somebody's heard some gossip, if somebody's got some suspicions, it's always difficult, basically, to shop somebody yes. that you know, particularly if you care for them. Right. All I would say to those individuals that if they ring and contact myself or the incident room at Ecclesfield Police Station, any information that is given to us will be dealt with in the strictest of confidence and will be taken through and dealt with in, in that nature. Okay. I should say there is an enormous reward on this, very, very big for normal criminal inquiries. £50,000 for information leading to conviction. So if you can help in any way with this case, the number here in the studio is 0500 600 600. Or you can call South Yorkshire Police at uh, another free call number, 0500 400 200. That's 0500 400 200.